And welcome back, to everybody. We are here once again with Victory Roads World Cup of Pokemon VGC, sponsored by Elgato. We're not sure if Elgato itself will be presented to us <laughs> during this um, uh, this situation right now. But of course, we do have Lou, which is a very good sign for that. I myself am Costa, and we are very excited to be bringing you the third match of the finals between Italy and Spain. Currently, Lou, Spain are in the lead mm -hmm. two to oh, two to zero so uh quite interesting situation we've got on our hands and we're wanting to see if italy is going to be able to try to bring this back that's the thing the pressure starts to really mount on italy's shoulders at this point you know this is the third game in if spain take the win in this match then you know they're not victorious overall but it is the biggest of uphill climbs for italy to be able to try and pull it back and get that victory um so you know italy in this one really need to focus and try and get that win on the board just get something on the score sheet there otherwise spain are just going to have such a lead going forward into the fourth match well, exactly that. I think, like you said, uh, Italy's going to have to try to get their engines moving as mm -hmm. quickly as possible because all of that momentum and pressure will just be building up slowly yet surely. So, of course, we're going to be featuring our third match. We're going to go ahead and check out the current standings, what previous matches we have seen. Of course, we saw where Ramses and Manuel were able to go ahead and both get 2-0 and wins over their Italian counterparts, I believe. Yeah, very commanding kind of out of the blocks here from Spain and just Italy, unfortunately, have been on the back foot a little bit. Uh, but as you can see there, our third match is going to be between Emmanuel and Victor. And, you know, it was nice to hear the managers yesterday in our pre-show kind of talking about these players and kind of the way that they've built themselves through this tournament. And now it's really coming down to this kind of final showdown between Italy and Spain. It really is. It's a, they, they couldn't have built up the hype any more, <laughs> those managers, yesterday. So it was very, mm -hmm. very good to have them on board with the stream, giving us their insight into the matter. So, of course, like Lou mentioned, we're going to be featuring Emanuele versus Victor. And this is going to be a very hype match indeed. We're going to go ahead and add a new slide. For those who weren't taking part yet in yesterday's stream, we got more information. We've got the current standings and form of these players throughout the entire entirety of the world cup tournament as well as all the teams they brought in each individual week so a lot of information to try to process here but to start it off we do see victor having a seven and O victory record right now amazing feat he's only dropped two individual games yeah, that's the thing. I remember Guillermo, the manager yesterday, mentioned um, that Victor is actually, in his opinion, kind of the new face of VGC, you know, one of the new up-and-comers, and it's going to be the future, potentially, for Spain. So really nice to see him coming out so strong in this tournament, 7-0, and absolutely phenomenal. And then if you take a look as well at Emmanuel, you know, still 5-2, and two, very strong record there. But the key thing, I think, to note is kind of the consistency of those teams in those first sort of four matches. There was only really one Pokemon change um, yeah. introducing that Reggie Alecki, um in the fourth match there so again really consistent showing you know really favoring that kind of calirog shadow rider and it's just whether in this particular matchup mm -hmm. victor maybe has team built to counter that specifically or maybe gone for a more general team build it was nice to hear the managers kind of talk about how they prepare for these matches and i wonder how things are going to go down in today's match well, exactly that. So it'll be quite fascinating to see if Emanuele does keep up that trend of the same team. So, of course, this is the moment that we're all looking forward to. We're going to go ahead and get player profiles rolling right now between both of these amazing trainers. We're going to be starting off with Victor Medina rocking that Calyrex Shadow Rider, Entei, Rillaboom, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Whimsicott, and the Naya Lido. Yeah, loving seeing this combination of team come out. Again, you've got that really solid Firewater Grass Core with the Entei, the Urshifu, and the Rillaboom as well. Rillaboom's just been so strong in this format so far. The Calyrex Shadow Rider, again, such a strong pick of Restricted, and it's great to have kind of the supportive Pokemon there in the form of Pokemon like the Whimsicott as well. They can get that Tailwind up, can throw some shenanigans down across the battlefield as well. And Nihiligo, you know, it's been featured so well in today's broadcast already. Just being able to hit such a heavy punch with that kind of meteor beam straight away get that boost up and then just be a threat on the field particularly if you can start racking up those beast boosts um it looks like a very hyper offensive team here from victor 
Oh, exactly that. As long as those media beams do land, of course. That's all true. Um, <laughs> it's so true. Unfortunately, we have seen those situations already arise during the stream. But we, of course, Victor is a very experienced trainer as well. Uh, Two-time VR Circuit Qualifiers Champion. 2018 experience getting that top eight in World Championship uh, for the senior division, as well as the top four in the European Internationals of 2017. So definitely an uh, experienced uh, pilot to try to go ahead and implement uh, and force this win for Spain to go ahead and push themselves forward 3 and 0. Oh. But of course, we do have their opponent for today, which is going to be Emanuele rocking that Zashin Incineroar, Rillaboom, that Pelipper, uh, Galarian Moltres, and the Ferrothorn Lou. Yeah, I really like the combination of Pokemon here. Obviously, I think the one that we're all drawn to straight away is that Pelipper. Um, not the most uh, sort of chosen rain setter in the format at the moment. Kyogre tends to be the one that brings the drizzle to the battlefield. But nice to have Pelipper in there and freeing up that restricted space as well. And Pelipper certainly has some good supportive utility. Um, and being able to hit those grass types with something like a hurricane as well can, you know, certainly give that kind of that typing on the field um, that will allow that damage to be dealt out. But the Pokemon that really jumps out for me is that Galarian Moltres. Um, a Pokemon that, you know, when Dino Dynamax was, you know, legal in the format. It was a Pokemon that would often, you know, be quite at the forefront. You can often do that kind of weakness policy prop as well. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how it will be in this particular series at the moment. But I'm looking forward to seeing Emanuele bring it. Yeah, exactly that. And Emanuele as well, no stranger to uh, very good accomplished results. Going to be able to get that top eight in the VR circuit, winter qualifier number four in 2021. Top eight in the Battle Dome, which I know is a uh, local, but now international Italian hosted uh, online tournament. Mm. So very good result there, actually being the champion of the uh, third Battle Dome too. So a lot of online experience in comparison to um, Victor, which does have that experience from in real life circuit. Um, but that's nothing to attest to, as at this point, we've seen a lot of formidable players rise up through the ranks during this online era. So I'm very look looking forward to seeing Emanuele and how they perform today. Yeah, that's the thing. History has definitely been made in this online era at the moment, as you've, as you've said there, Costa. And certainly with Spain versus Italy, there will be more history to be made. But we can take a look at team preview here. Um, and you can see already, you know, the Entei looks like it's been locked in as a nice lead again. Entei does give you that kind of nice um, sort of pivotal momentum, whether you want to go for something like a Snarl, whether you want to go for something like Extreme Speed. And, you know, rocking that Choice Scarf on there as well does give it that speedy advantage. Yeah, exactly that. So, uh, I mean, it is a very interesting kind of like synergy being able to see, uh, for example, over on Emanuela's side, that Ferrothorn, do you feel like at this point it could really put in a lot of work? Because we don't see any manual way for Emanuela to be able to actually set up that trick room. Yeah, that's the thing. Ferrothorn, it can be nice to obviously combat against the Nihiligo or the Whimsicott, for example. Um, but then, you know, if, it depends what set it is. If it's something like that kind of Iron Defense body press set, then that certainly can deal some good damage. But the Calyrex is going to be something you still need to be able to deal with. And you're not going to be able to boost up your special defenses that Calyrex obviously likes to try and target into. Um, Urshifu as well, you know, but those critical hits can try and get through. Um, but being, you know, the Grass and Steel type, it's not going to worry too much about those water type moves necessarily. Um, and particularly with the support from Pal you know, bringing the rain to negate any fire damage on the opposing side of the field could be very helpful to support that Ferrothorn going forward. It really can, because of course it does have that benefit of protecting those uh, grass steel types with its water typing of that rain. So just being able to reduce, of course, the fire typing moves. But of course, we are here for the leads of game one, ladies and gents. We do see that Pelipper in shiny form, actually, alongside Galarian Moltres for Emanuele. And on Victor's side, we see the Ente Whimsicott as a very interesting lead as well. Not so good up against that rain, perhaps. Yeah, that's the thing. Entei can't really go for those fire type moves in this situation, but then again, both its target options there don't necessarily mind fire type moves in general anyway. Um, it's a really nice move for Emmanuel here because you can you can, you can stop potentially setting up with your Moltres, for example, try and get a cheeky nasty plot in here, boosting up your special attack, whereas Pelipper can obviously go for some good utility moves there as well to support the Moltres. And Pelipper, if it wants to go for something like the Hurricane into that Whimsicott, that is very likely going to take it down to the Focus Dash if that is the item. Mm. We have had a sneak peek. We know it's not, um, but that could be good information for Emmanuel to glean in this game one. 
yeah exactly that so i think in this scenario it just all comes down to what the priorities are from either side of the trainers if they're going to try to go for any sort of reads perhaps but i think uh, like you mentioned lou it's just going to be about the setup in this situation as we are going to be seeing emanuele go for the switch out of the moltres into that zashian which of course will be going ahead and activating its intrepid sword ability allowing itself to go skyrocket up to plus one of its attack we see the miss from the stone edge of the entei trying to target down i believe the zashian slot whilst pelipper does actually get hit from that moon blast does actually get as well the special attack drop which will not allow this weather ball to deal as much damage and maybe not even pick up the ko but ignore me it's more than enough because Pelipa is surprisingly um invested in its special attack in contrary to that entei I mean, I was saying that Pelipper often can be a little bit more supportive with defensive measures or tailwind support, things like that, for example, we've seen it in the past. But actually, it's like Weatherball just pick up a solid KO against that Entei, and that will also help protect the Zashin going forward from taking any of those fire type moves. We've obviously seen the Stone Edge, that's going to protect both those flying types from taking that in the future. So a really nice KO there by Pelipper. Um, and nice as well from Manuel, you know, not setting up necessarily the Moltres, but setting up that ball position, getting the Zashin into play to apply some good pressure to that Whimsicott clock going forward. It could also be a good opportunity for the Zashin to try and get a substitute up here. Um, but then with the Calyrex Shadow Rider, going to be able to deal a heavy hit. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the thing about Calyrex right now. It does have that speed advantage over the Zashian, so it's just going to be dependent on what each trainer is going to be trying to expect here. As we see the Pelipper uh, deciding to switch out now for that Moltres, it's done enough damage from what it seems turn one. Mm -hmm. It needs to be switched out as the Tailwind does get set up from that Whimsicott. And we do see, oh, the Psyshot trying to pick Ooh. up the KO onto the Moltres, but only, uh, of course, running into that immunity of the Dark typing. Zashian goes for the Behemoth Blade, Bro Brings the Calyrex down to a focus sash, which of course is revealed on Victor's side. So a lot of things going on in this turn too. Yeah, I mean, the Calyrex being able to survive there, absolutely clutch there for uh, Victor. A really good item choice selection there. Um, you know, not something we're kind of used to seeing on Calyrex at the moment. You would normally pair it up on the Whimsicott, but good information there from Manuelli, knowing that the Whimsicott will not have access to that Focus Sash going forward. Again, really nice switch from the Moltres, bringing it in. It doesn't worry about the Ghost-type moves as much, and obviously those Psychic moves are going to have no effect on it at all. And I think quite a wise protect from the Calyrex here. It does make a lot of sense as the Whimsicott is going to be going for that Moonblast. Now into the Moltres. Does hit super effective, but does no damage whatsoever. Maybe an indication of an Assault Vest there, as well as no special attack drops either from its secondary effect. But the Behemoth Blade goes into the Whimsicott. We do know the Focus Ash is on the Calyrex, so it cannot survive that overwhelmingly powerful move. And of course, we do see that Fiery Wrath coming out. It is double target, but of course, it only meets that Protect. Yeah, it'd be in interesting to see what the item is on that Moltres. It is indeed, of course, that Assault Vest, and that would explain why it's not going for any of those kind of setup moves um, that we've seen it do so well before. Um, like mm. the Nasty Plot, for example, can't use those stated moves if it is Assault Vested. Um, we can see as well that the Oshifu has come out into the fray, and it can benefit as well from this rain um, going for some of those powerful surging strikes. Obviously, Zashin not going to worry too much necessarily, uh, but still going to be able to hit that Moltres really well. Um, and, you know, Moltres is definitely the Pokemon that if you are Victor at the minute, you need to be wary of. Your Calyrex isn't going to be safe from those dark type attacks, particularly when it's sitting at 1 HP. Um, you want to maybe try and utilize these Tailwind turns and deal some good damage while you still can. Well, yeah, exactly that. It's all about trying to... Uh essentially reduce that hp sure uh, slowly yet surely on your opponent try to get rid of all of that pressure and i think moltres uh, being in the situation that it is it is so good up against uh this calyrex and i think we saw that sucker punch trying to pick off the calyrex which actually opted to go for the nasty plot which means this zashian might not be targeting it lou uh, but before that we're going to be seeing the surging strikes come out from this urshifu in the rain is such a threat three hits Three criticals, and of course, the third one is enough to pick up the KO. The Moltres is out of contention from game one, as now the Zashian is just left to go ahead and essentially target down this Urshifu is what I'm expecting, but let's find out, as it's, no, it's a double Ooh. level Calyrex. Very good double targeting there from Emanuele to make sure that Calyrex it does not build itself up as a threat and essentially runs away with this game.
Yeah, fantastic targeting there. Otherwise, that could have been very, very dicey for Emmanuel going forward. Uh, brilliant play from Victor, though, as well. I have to credit it. You know, going for the... Um, nasty plots the sucker punch would fail and then making sure that Urshifu could pick up the threat against that Moltres because otherwise Moltres could just you know sucker punch again on the next turn and the nasty plot you know would have been for nothing she wouldn't be able to move offensively so mm. really good kind of thinking there from Victor but again Manuel really countering that well and just making sure to pick up a KO against that opposing um, Calyrex and it also covered for a nice switch as well maybe the Calyrex would want to try and switch out just you know preserve itself a little bit more going forward um, but you know it worked out really well for Emmanuel and both our players now have the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back maybe switch up the ball position a little bit and hey you talked about it earlier Costa that Ferrothorn is on the field and sorry it's just the Urshifu on the field for Victor yeah, it is, and this is looking to be game already. I think Ferrothorn will naturally um, kind of check this Urshifu, unless, of course, uh, it depends on the set, to be re uh, to be honest with you. So um, if it does have access to any sort of grass type which does connect with the Urshifu, that will be really good right now. Or even that Iron Defense setup for the Body Press, as uh, the critical hits, the fighting type moves from this uh, Urshifu will not be landing guaranteed critical hits, and you're still susceptible to that Iron Barbs for the Ferrothorn, which, of course, will be bringing your HP down while Zacian is of course going to be outspeeding everything on the field but Manuel is thinking I have so many resources available to myself I might mm -hmm. as well keep Zacian in the back bring that Pelipper in right now as the Urshifu does try to target it down this looks to be the uh, rapid strikes into the Pelipper Pelipper ladies and gents it is very bulky in its <laughs> physical defense so do not obviously see that as any sort of indication there the rain will was so good to power up Urshifu in that scenario, but of course, I just don't think there's enough resources for um, Victor in this case, as we do see body press coming out, Lou. Yeah, we can see the body press coming out from that Ferrothorn, and I think this is the issue here um, for Victor, is the Urshifu, it only can really target down one opponent at this point, and um, Pokemon like the Ferrothorn, then obviously, we're going to see the Zashin come back into the fray now as well. Whichever Pokemon isn't being targeted is going to have the opportunity to go and try and target down against Victor here. Um, I would have possibly liked to have seen the Iron Defense go up there just to, um, you know, allow those body presses going forward to have a little bit more kind of power um, mm -hmm. to try and pick up some KOs. Um, and, you know, not seeing a Grass-type move come out possibly could be indicative that there isn't a Grass-type move on that opposing Ferrothorn. Um, possibly, you know, going just for that body press set, maybe a Leech Seed Protect kind of set, um, set, but we'll have to find out, you know, the more information, the better here. But Emmanuel has the opportunity now to just target down both into that Urshifu, and yes, Urshifu can only pick one target, and that's not going to be dealing a huge chunk of damage, particularly as the rain has now disappeared, and both of these steel types aren't going to worry about water moves necessarily. Well, exactly that, and I think that may have just been to try to maybe not reveal, but that wouldn't make a lot of sense not revealing the iron defense there, as you are revealing the body press. As we're going to be seeing the Zashian go for the Behemoth Blade, of course, it's not enough to pick up a KO onto that Urshifu, which, of course, is resisting the stealing types due to that fighting. As Urshifu does uh, go out for that retaliation move onto Zashian uh, with the Rapid Strikes, it's going to be able to just barely chunk it down to half of its HP's worth, but we've got a Ferrothorn right now trying to go for that body press only wanting to focus down on the damage right there it, it's not enough to actually pick up the ko but of course victor is in realization they can't do much there that may have just been trying to scout out for what kind of damage it's able to deal onto the zashian and how bulky that zashian may be trained yeah that's the thing emmanuel's really pinned him down here towards this end game he's going to be able to take um you know, game one very easily here just by targeting down. Uh, but Victor certainly has, you know, a couple of seconds here to really think about how to adjust going for game two. Remember, Victor hasn't dropped a single set in the World Cup so far. Um, so he's definitely not going to be looking to try and, you know, take that perfect record so far. And Emmanuel also has, you know, the shoulders of Italy to carry at the moment. Um, you know, they're 2-0 down so far. Um, so being able to take this first victory certainly will give you that confidence going into game two that you might be able to start putting Italy on that score sheet. Well, exactly that. It's a lot of pressure because, like I think uh, our previous lovely cast has mentioned, this is all, uh, essentially all the matches today that we're observing are in the actual order they were mm -hmm. played in real life. So um, there's a lot of pressure right now for Italy's side. So Emanuele doing very good there, being able to go ahead and have a lot of resources available to themselves. They, of course, revealed the Ferrothorn set there uh, that may come into consideration for Victor in handling uh, that Ferrothorn if it does become too much of an issue later on in the 
the game. So uh, I do find it quite interesting, and I'm wondering what Victor can do there, because we saw a couple of reveals of the Focus Sash on the Calyrex rather than the Whimsicott, so I think they just need to be able to try to go ahead and uh, push all of the momentum out, because as we know, both of these teams, at least the main majority of them, are hyper-offensive, even though Victor does seem to be winning on that uh, scale. Yeah, I think the problem for Victor here was just, unfortunately, his Pokemon just kept getting KO'd. Um, yeah. You know, Emmanuel was able to, um, you know, to, to state the obvious, but Emmanuel was able to, you know, make some really good ball position switches here. You know, switching out the Zashin and the Pelipper when it was needed to and bringing in Pokemon from the back, particularly when you brought that Moltres in um, to, I think it was the Psy Shock attack, so obviously just negating a, an opportunity there for the Calyrex. Um, and being able to apply pressure with kind of having that type advantage. Um, as well, you know, the item reveals, that's good information going into game two. Emmanuel's going to be able to use that to create more of these strategies and apply a lot more pressure to Victor going forward. But, I mean, you're right, Costa. Victor certainly has a lot of kind of offensive pressure going forward um, and can certainly shake things up a little bit with those Pokemon. Like the Naya Ligo, for example, it could apply some great pressure to those Moltres and Pelipper going forward if we see that Lee come out again. You know, neither of those Pokemon want to be taking any Rock-type damage um, and Naya Ligo is an absolute master at that. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it make a switch, but if Victor does opt to bring the Naya Ligo, he needs to make sure that he's got supportive measures so it's not going to be taken down by any Mordor-type moves. Exactly that, as we are going to be seeing that Moltres making an appearance once again with its trusty buddy, that Pelipper, by its side, for Emanuele's side. And we're going to be seeing the same lead over on Victor's side, so maybe thinking in this scenario, well, what if my Stone Edge did actually connect? Maybe it could have actually uh, paid dividends, as we do know this Moltres is the Assault Vest variant. Yeah, that's the thing. The Entei last time targeted down into, I, I believe it was into the Moltres slot. Um, either way, it avoided. But, you know, knowing that Moltres maybe isn't the biggest threat to you currently at the minute, it's that Pelipper with the Weather Ball. Maybe that's the Pokemon that you want to try and target down here and, you know, possibly just go for that Moonblast as well, deal a little bit of damage to um, the Pelipper as well in case you need to somehow get the double hit on it, um, in case, you know, Stone Edge misses and you just want to try and chip away at it a little bit more. Um, but I think certainly calling the targeting here for Victor and just making sure that you pick up a KO early and in the same way that Emmanuel did in the game one, I think could give him straight away that advantage very early on in the game. Yeah, I completely agree. So it is going to be so, so intense just this turn one of game two as we actually see Pelipper reveal the Protect from Emanuela's side. So very interesting to see that it actually it carries that. But no, Stone Edge Ooh. goes into the Moltres. It deals over half of its damage worth as we are going to be seeing the Berserk Croc allowing this Moltres to go straight up to plus one of its special attack. Moonblast going to be trying to uh, somehow pick up a KO. Not quite enough with that Assault Vest uh, being carried from the Moltres. Moltres, and we see the Hurricane Ooh. coming out, dealing a one-hit KO onto the Whimsicott, getting rid of it, and right now, Victor's in a situation where they do not have Tailwind available to themselves. Yeah, I mean, I said the Stone Edge Moonblast double up would be really, really nice, but going into that Moltres, you know, great call cool seeing the Protect was coming up from that Pelipper, but just unfortunately wasn't enough to pick up the KO against it, and it's now also had that Berserk boost. Um, it's going to be sitting, you know, very, very, um, what's the word, of, uh, like a uh, concern here for the Calyrex and the Entei. Of course, Entei we know has that choice scarf, so Moltres definitely isn't out of it yet. Um, it has to potentially, you know, try and avoid this. Pelipper can then potentially try and deal with that Entei going forward. Uh, but that Calyrex there on the field potentially could capitalize on the defensive place that Emmanuel might be pinned into now and could go for something like that nasty plot. Yeah, so Victor currently having that Caliente on the field um, isn't the best situation as that Moltres does have the Sucker Punch, but we do know that the Focus Sash is on the Calyrex, like you mentioned. So, uh, of course, we do see that interaction being played right now. Sucker Punch being able to bring that Calyrex straight down to 1 HP. Uh, Entei will be moving immediately after. It's locked into that Stone Edge. Does so much Ooh. damage onto Pelipper. Get ready. The uh, sweeping train may be appearing right now as we see Astral barrage connecting with both of the pokemon but moltres actually survives thanks to that assault fest oh moltres is an absolute machine right now on the battlefield of course calyrex will get its boost from his grim nay ability but you could see the frustration from victor there he really needed that moltres to be ko'd and he was not happy that it was remaining on the battlefield um but again you know sucker punch this time finding its mark no nasty plot here and has obviously taken it right down to its focus sash so once again this calyrex in a very difficult predicament because sucker punch could easily come out again on this next turn and just remove it from the field so victor is going to have to consider how to play this calyrex safely in this next turn or whether it's worth sacrificing Sacrificing it to try and deal some damage elsewhere, but that Entei locked into that Stone Edge is going to be risky going forward. 
Yeah, it really will be as we've got Zashin on the field and Stone Edge is not going to be doing anything at all to this Zashin, which of course does resist. And it's in a really prime spot right now. Uh, Moltres does check that Calyrex. Uh, so I think the, just the scenario that we're going to be seeing played out right now is whether Entei can land a Stone Edge on the Moltres, but that will be about if that Moltres does of course stay in on the field. Yeah, I think quite wise from Victor here, just protecting that Calyrex from the potential Sucker Punch as Moltres um, has indeed gone for it. But you can see, of course, it's going to fail. Entei does manage to connect its Stone Edge oh. on the Moltres. So a sigh of relief for that Calyrex going forward. Doesn't have to contend with that Sucker Punch. But it does leave the Zashin free um, to go for whatever it wants to do. Um, it is going to go for the Play Rough down into oh. the Entei. Um, doesn't do too much damage there. Um, maybe it was just trying to catch something like the Ajifu switching in. Uh, maybe thinking Entei wanted to reset um, what it was locked into. But this does give a manual the opportunity to bring the Rillaboom into the fray. So, Rillaboom being on the field right now means very good momentum and checks right now for Emanuele's side as, of course, that grassy glide priority is so, so mm. crucial in order to outspeed this Calyrex. And we know that uh, Entei right now is locked in that Choice Star, so it is locked in the Stone Edge. That's not going to be doing anything at all right now. And uh, we do know that Urshifu um, Rapid Strike is in the back for Victor, which definitely spells trouble for himself as the Rillaboom essentially does have the check on him as well so i think rillaboom may even steal this or at least just put emanuele so far forward in momentum and positioning right now yeah rillaboom is not who you want to see if you're victors you said grassy guide that can pick up the KO against that calorie and Urshifu coming in, we know it's not carrying a Focus Sash, so something like a Grassy Glide on the Grassy Terrain is going to be able to pick up the KO against it. And you can see it connecting there into the Calyrex, just removing the Restricted for Victor, forcing oh. him to be bringing that Entei back in. There will be reset, but with the Rain in action, then it's obviously negating oh. those Fire-type damages as well. So Entei's not going to be happy here, and oh, just unfortunate times in this turn, Costa. Oh, it really is as we saw the play rough actually miss mm. that was quite crucial because i'm definitely sure that would have been a ko that is so so rough for emanuele right now mm. and may even allow some sort of window of opportunity for victor going into this game because urshifu does have the option on protecting right now ente will not be taken down as it will be moving first and essentially grassy glide um will not be able to pick up that ko so maybe picking up a burn will be um victor's way out maybe a sacred fire burn uh because uh, mm. of course it's not gonna be dealing as much damage but i think the burn status right now is the most crucial yeah getting a burn would certainly be helpful for victor here in this situation the grassy glide is going to connect into the urge if we pick oh. up the solid one hit ko against it um you know unfortunate play rough miss but hey grassy glide's just going to be able to cover you the next turn as Ente does indeed go um, for, I think it was the Flare Blitz there down into the Rillaboom, but in the rain, only going to be doing about 50%. And obviously taking that recoil as well, just going to be putting Entei on a bit of a ticking clock here, particularly if Behemoth Blade is following up into it. This is going to be dealing some really solid damage thanks to the boost that Entei has got. And it is enough to pick up the KO. I think we saw the thumbs up there from Victor. Um, you know, incredibly well played by Emanuele there. He just constantly was able to pick up those KOs, was just on the offensive, playing around um, Victor's kind of strategy here and just solidly taking one hit knockouts and that was really impressive to see that really was uh i mean i, I felt like not only did emanuele play very very well mm -hmm. they did have a very strong advantage team wise versus victor there you know you really as a caloric shadow rider player you do not want to see either any sort of flying dark type move uh, Pokemon, <laughs> such as evil or let's say mini evil being that delirium moltres especially when mm -hmm. it carries that assault vest you saw how bulky and tanky it was it took that astral barrage straight right in the face when it was already in <laughs> the red zone with its hp so that that was such a big survive because i do feel like in that situation it, uh, that calorex still could have been able to apply damage but then again you've got rillaboom and rillaboom kind mm -hmm. of checkmates the situation and that's essentially what emmanuel was able to accomplish there yeah, as soon as Rillaboom joined the battlefield, it really was GG at that point. There wasn't too much that Victor could do to kind of play around it, unfortunately. But amazing to see them in action. Commiserations for Victor taking his first loss in the tournament so far. But I mean, phenomenal to be making it to the grand finals with a 7-0 record. And this is the only time to take your loss. You know, amazing player. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what Victor can accomplish in years to come. But again, Italy have finally got themselves on that scoreboard 2-1 uh, going into the fourth match. 
Yeah, exactly that. So it's Italy's game to try to bring this back right now and put all the pressure straight back onto Spain. But so far, mm -hmm. it is looking to be so, so hype of a final. We've seen some amazing players play some amazing strategies and moves. So I'm really looking forward to the continuation of it. I do want to make a very quick note. Manuel Barrea is now confirmed to be the tournament MVP. Wow. They're unfortunately losing there. So we've got confirmation with that. They were able to go, uh, Manuel was able to go ahead and win their match previously. So they'll be very happy to hear this. But of <laughs> course, what we will do is cut to a very short break. I will be right back with our fourth match for today.